This video looks at the effect of changing compensated gain on the phase margin. So videos 1 to 5 looked at the definition and the computation of margins. And what we want to do now is look more towards feedback analysis and design. In other words, how can I actually choose a compensator in order to get a good design? Now what we're going to do is assume a simple loop like this <coughs> and for our compensator M of S, we're going to assume we can write it as some simple scale again K multiplied by M dash of S. And we are going to investigate what happens when we change K, or in more detail, what happens to the gain and phase margins. Now, how is the phase margin defined? Quick reminder for you. First, you find the gain crossover frequency, omega g, and that's defined as the frequency whereby the modulus of m of j omega g of j omega equals 1, or you may prefer to write that as 0 decibels. Having done that, you take that particular frequency and substitute it into this formula here. So the phase margin is given as 180 plus the argument of mg. Now, remember, we're going to write m of s equals k m dash of s. And what we're going to do is ask, how does this phase margin change when I change my compensator gain k? We'll start with an example. And first, we want to say, how does the Bode diagram change when the gain is changed? And we're going to use a simple example here. You'll see g equals 0.4 of s plus 2, s plus 1, m of s equals k times s plus 5 over s. And we're going to put in some different values of k, 0.5, 1, 4, 10. And we'll note this is exactly the same example that we covered in video 6. So here is the Bode diagrams, and because we've done it before, we'll do this fairly quickly. First, we note the phase plot does not change. Second, we note that the gain plot changes by 20 log to the base 10 of k, and we covered that in detail in the last video. But in particular, we might be interested in what happens to the gain crossover frequency. So let's mark those. The gain crossover frequency was here for k equals 0.5. Now, if I take that down, you remember this is where I calculate the phase margin. How far am I above the minus 180 degree line at the gain crossover frequency? For k equals 1, I'm calculating the phase margin in a different place. For k equals 4, I'm calculating the phase margin down here. And for k equals 10, I'm calculating the phase margin down here. So a summary. When we change the gain, only the gain plot changes. So the gain crossover frequency changes. And why is that important? Because the gain crossover frequency is where we calculate the phase margin. The phase crossover frequency is fixed, but we're not going to deal with that in this particular video. What we're most interested in are the consequences of changing the gain. And the consequences are the gain crossover frequency changes, and therefore the phase margin will change. So, remind of some quick details. In order to find the gain crossover frequency, we're solving this formula here, k times m dash of j omega g of j omega equals 1, and we're defining the phase margin using this formula here. Now, what do we need to notice? In general, there is no simple analytic formula which captures the change in the phase margin with k. So if you look at these two formula here, okay, uh, when you change k, you might say, well, is there a simple relationship between omega, so if I write omega as a function of k, is there a simple relationship which tells me how omega changes with k when I'm solving for the gain crossover frequency? And once I've done that, could I use that simple relationship in here to find a simple dependence for phase margin? And in general, the key thing is there is no simple analytic formula, apart from trivial examples. So the gain crossover frequency does not have a simple analytic dependence on k in general. And that's quite important, because what it's telling you is that we're not really going to be doing paper and pen exercises. We have to use graphical or numerical approaches or computer approaches. And in particular,
particular, we're going to have to do a new computation for each value of k in most cases. So let's do an example. What's the impact on the phase margin of changing k? And let's calculate all the phase margins. And what we're going to do, you'll see here, is we're going to use a Bode diagram to do it. We're not going to try and do it analytically. Um, with an analytic computation, we're going to go straight to the Bode diagram where it's more straightforward. And what's the technique we use? We find the gain crossover frequency, and from that we find the phase margin. So here's the example. You'll notice the gain crossover frequency with k equals 0.5 is marked here. You can see we're crossing the zero decibel line here. So we follow that frequency down. That's what this dotted line is. And the phase margin is the distance above the minus 180 degree line. So you can read it by inspection off the Bode diagram. Now, if I change k, for example, over here, you'll see I've got k equals 10, and that's the light blue plot. You'll see here the gain crossover frequency is now this line. And so the phase margin is read along here. And in this example, you'll see the phase margin is now negative. I can, of course, do the other two. k equals 1. The gain crossover frequency is here. There's the phase margin. And for k equals 4, the gain crossover frequency is here and there's the phase margin. So the key thing to note here is you can read these phase margins very, very quickly off the Bode diagram. So if I can sketch the Bode diagram, I can do it. However, what we're going to conjecture is having to sketch four Bode diagrams like this is not ideal in general, so we want to find an alternative, and we'll get to that in a moment. So we want to avoid creating too many line plots. And we want to ask ourselves, can we update the gain crossover frequency by inspection instead of having to create a new line plot? And this is for the specific case of a simple gain change. Now, a change in k corresponds to a change in the gain plot of 20 log to the base 10 of k. And therefore, the crossover frequency for the new plot corresponds to the intercept with minus 20 log to the base 10 of k of the Bode diagram with k equals 1. So I don't actually need to do a new sketch. I just need to find the intercept with a different value to find the new gain crossover frequency. And we'll illustrate this with an example. So here's the example. We've got gm equals k over s, s plus 1, s plus 5. And we're given as you'll see over here, the Bode diagram for k equals 1. But I actually want the phase margins for k equals 2, 10, and 100. And I want to get these without having to do any more Bode diagrams. Well, if k equals 2, that corresponds to an upshift of 6 decibels. And what that means is the same as moving the game plot up by 6 decibels is to move the ticks down by 6 decibels. So I'm going to mark a line here where that distance is 6, and this is going to be my new 0 decibel line. So I go across like this. Sorry, the sketch isn't perfect. And you'll find roughly around there is going to be my new gain crossover frequency. So that'll be my gain crossover frequency for k equals 2. And therefore, I can read the phase margin down here, and you can see in this case, this is about 60 degrees. What about k equals 10? Well, k equals 10 corresponds to a 20 decibel shift, so I'm looking at the intercept with the minus 20 decibel line, which is here. So this is going to be the crossover frequency for k equals 10. So I take that down, and here's a new phase margin, which you can see is going to be of the order of 25 degrees. What about k equals 100? Well, now I'm looking for the intercept with the minus 40 decibel line, which is over here. So I'll run that down, and you'll see the new phase margin is about minus 20 degrees. Now, the suggestion here is let's go to MATLAB and see if our technique has worked. Because if we're confident that it's working, that will make our life easy in future. So there's our 
window, two windows. So we've entered the system already, um, and you can see we had a phase margin of 76 degrees when k equals 1. So let's put k equals 2 in and see what margin we get. And the answer is 65 degrees. And you'll remember when we did the crude sketch, um, and the axes weren't particularly pre precise, we said it was about 60 degrees, so we weren't far out. What about with 10? 25 degrees, and again, if you look back, you'll see that's roughly what we said it was with our crude sketch. And with 100, minus 24 degrees. And again, you'll see that's not far out from what we've said. So what we've done is we've shown that this crude method, um, the crude in the fact that we're using just eyeballing numbers, we've not got very precise axes, has actually given us the correct values for the margins. So I didn't need to keep resketching this game plot. All I needed to do was recognize that the equivalent crossover frequency was the intercept with a different horizontal line, and the horizontal line depended on the k. So if, if k was 6 decibels, you find the intercept with minus 6 decibels. If k was 20 decibels, you find the intercept with minus 20 decibels, and so on. OK, what next then? We might want to choose a value of k, which gives us the phase margin we want. Now, you'll remember that we often said that a phase margin of around 60 was considered a good start point in any design. All right. So the question is, is there a straightforward way of achieving the phase margin that we want? OK, and then identifying the change in K required. Well, the answer to this is yes. And so that's what we're going to do now. So what's the procedure for choosing K to achieve the desired phase margin? Just remember that a change in K corresponds to a change in the game plot of 20 log to the base 10 of K. So first, we're going to choose the gain crossover frequency, omega g, which would give us the right phase margin. That's step number one. And then step number two is you need to choose k to make this the gain crossover frequency. So first, choose the gain crossover frequency you want, and then second, choose k to make sure that is the gain crossover frequency. And the way you do that is by solving this identity here. 20 log to the base 10 of the modulus of k m dash g equals 0 decibels. Or in other words, you get this, that 20 log to the base 10 of k is minus 20 log to the base 10 m dash g. And this is clearly the same as the Bode diagram for k equals 1. So in other words, you've got minus whatever the Bode diagram is gives you 20 log to the base 10 of k. Now, just to remark, how do we actually find omega g? Well, the phase margin is defined with this formula here, 180 plus arg m dash g. Now, if I tell you what the phase margin is going to be, then I can actually reverse this formula and say the argument of m dash g has got to be this, phase margin minus 180. So, for example, if I wanted a phase margin to be 60, then PM minus 180 equals minus 120. So what I'm doing is saying I want this argument to be minus 120. So once you've specified what phase you want for M dash G, then it's fairly easy to find the gain crossover frequency, which gives you that. And again, you'll see this with the examples. So here's a very simple example. What are we going to do first? First, I'm going to say I want a 60 degree phase margin. So here we go. My desired phase margin is 60 degrees. And therefore, using the formula phase margin minus 180, I find that the argument of my system has to be minus 120. And here, that's what this line here is. This line corresponds to minus 120 degrees. So I need this point here to be my gain crossover frequency. So there you go. I found my desired gain crossover frequency. And then I followed this line up. And I say, ah, but I need this point to be 0 decibels in order for this to be the gain crossover frequency. So you notice I've got to lift my plot by a certain amount. And in this case, it's probably about a 10 
decibel lift. So that tells you that 20 log to the base 10 of k would be 10 decibels. So there you go. So that's the technique, and we'll do a few more of these so you get the idea. So here's the first one. Find k such that the phase margin is 45 degrees, and you're given the Bode diagram for k equals 1. So first we do our formula. We want 45 degrees, we're going to put 40... Oops, oh dear, what's happened there? We put 45 into this formula, so we get 45 minus 180 equals minus 135. So we're looking for the intercept with a minus 135 degree line. There it is. You see that line that's appeared? That's the minus 135 degree line. So that tells us that the intercept is here. So this tells me the gain crossover frequency. So I take that up now to the gain plot and you can see that I need to move the gain plot here down by about 5 decibels in order to make it go through 0 decibels at that frequency. And therefore 20 log to the base 10 of k has got to be minus 5. And that tells me what k needs to be. Here's a different example. Choose k to get a 60 degree phase margin. And again, we've helped you out here by putting the formula straight in. So the phase margin minus 180 is now minus 120 because for phase margin, we've put in a value of 60 and we've marked that line for you. Here's the line minus 120. So this has got to be my gain crossover frequency. So I take that line up, find the intercept here, and now what you're saying is I've got to lift okay, my game plot by a certain amount. Now I can't tell you exactly, but that's something like 6 to 7 decibels. So you've got 6 to 7 decibels equals 20 log to the base 10 of k. So you solve that formula and you've got k. So in summary, we've shown that change in the gain causes a direct change in the phase margin, but the dependence is not usually a simple analytic expression. The effect of changing k on the phase margin can be determined most easily by finding the gain crossover frequency using the minus 20 log to the base 10 k line rather than 0 decibels. Okay, so rather than drawing lots more lines, it's easier just to find the intercept with a new line. It's always easy to identify the required k, also easy, to achieve a desired phase margin by forcing, that's the key thing, you're forcing the gain crossover frequency to the, the one that you want. And that's the one which satisfies this equation here. So you find the gain crossover frequency you want, and then you can find the corresponding k. So the next video is going to give a number of worked examples and also a bit more use of MATLAB so that you can master these skills.